गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते वेलकम टू चैटी नाथ नेक्स्ट सेशन टूडेज कन्वर्सेशन इज गोइंग टू बी ऑन स्टार्टअप एम्पावरिंग वी कॉमन पीपल सो दिंग इज एज ऑल द स्पीकर डिस्कस्ड इन दास्ट इट रियली इज नॉट अबाउट स्टार्टअप ऑलवेज ट्राइंग टू मेक ए यूनिकॉर्न ट्राइंग टू डू वेरी लार्ज वेरी बिग थिंग्स बट इट ऑफन इज अबाउट गोइंग एंड डूइंग थिंग्स for the common people touching the common people whether it's a small agri tech type of a startup whether it's something to do with coaching whether it's something to do with creating nutraceuticals whether it's trying to go and empowering people inside a corporation that's what today we'll talk about that's what our speakers today actually do so allow me to very quickly introduce our four speakers and i'm just going clockwise uh, as as i see them on on screen jumar runs a startup called hia boosters it produces as you would start figuring hia comes from health health boosters essentially so it creates nutraceuticals nutraceuticals for different areas of health essentially making health immunity basic some needs very accessible to people jumar has uh, She is an I I M A alumna. She worked in Accenture, my alma mater, for a period of time. Uh, she was a VC, and then she is a startup right now. Next, Ramesh Rao. Ramesh and I have been friends, colleagues for for a period of time. Ramesh is an electrical engineer. He's been into manufacturing, has put up plants, has done corporate. Now is a startup. His start startup is Agritech. I'll not say more about that. It's really interesting you should hear hear it from him third shalini she is sitting in sydney australia and um, thanks for joining from all the way from there so uh, shalini has been a corporate person as well spent a lot of time in mind tree before that she was a cs professor now she is startup again she has runs a platform called k for coach that's ai based on the cloud essentially ma- measures performance performance of people in different types of environments i'll just stop there let shalini talk about it later and guru swami rava subramanian uh i call him subhu so subhu has been a long time corporate uh done medium size companies also super larges like ibm he has done growth of those companies he has run senior leadership type of positions he has done startups of his own in it services previously he also runs a startup today semco style some of you might remember the name ricardo semler from your college uh, days and he also runs serious one that's a uh, fund which usually goes and invest in early stage startups so with that we can start this off and we got a few questions as we started as we started our registrations let me read one of those questions out and see who could answer that so the first question came in saying does it have always to be a social contribution or can it be at a price if yes how do we determine optimal price let me uh, let me have ramesh answer that because his his work his startup is directed at a special segment let's let's uh, start from there and maybe jumar could answer after that thanks to us uh, so yeah um, interesting question the social contribution should come from the product or service you always need to remember that uh, you are a for profit organization and you would need to make money out of it so uh to give an example uh, like you know our, our my startup is about uh, you know helping farmers uh, <clears throat> separate the chili uh, stem from the chili pod um so i'm going to charge them for that but um, in in return i'm going to give to the ecosystem in terms of you know a productivity benefits which will help the farmer you know either earn more revenue or you know uh make more profit uh, just to give you a rough uh, estimate of the numbers uh india produces about uh, 2 million tons of chili uh and if i were to say that if, if my 
<coughs> cost of separation of the chili stem and pod uh, cuts down the price by 10 rupees per kg. It end off is approximately 2,000 crores of money back into the ecosystem. So that is your social contribution. So uh, your product or service should be the contributor. Uh, costs will automatically follow. Um, so you need to look at it uh, not only from a cost perspective, you are a for-profit per organization. Uh, but you should look at your product or service uh, to contribute to the society in terms of you know helping the, the farmer in my case, or um, let's say uh, students uh, in case of I do tech. Um, so it should be like your, you should focus on your product. Uh, uh, cost is, is secondary and uh, you will make money out of it. Uh, sure. Sure, um, I agree with Ramesh. See, I believe uh, can happen in two ways. Uh, one is by creating products that increase the quality of life. And, uh, you can define the TG for whom you have created the product. Uh, essentially, the objective is that your products increase the quality of life. The second way you can contribute is by increasing the income. Uh, because that then allows you to spend better, allows the person for whom you have increased the income to spend better. So, uh, I believe what Ramesh uh, was in many ways touching uh, uh, was about increasing the income of the farmers itself. That is the way your social contribution can be calculated. The other way, which is uh, the way I am running my startup, is by creating products that help solve nutrition. Ultimately, the objective is to improve the quality of the person so we're stating it. And uh, nutrition is a rampant problem in the country. I mean, uh, we have this image of uh, anemic Indian women. Iron is a deficiency that several understand, but uh, it's not just that. We are also, as a country, deficient in vitamin D, vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin A, you name it. And, and we start seeing that, uh, you know, as uh, uh, manifest as different conditions in people. And uh, ultimately, uh, what it leads to is loss of productivity. So if you fix nutrition, you fix productivity, you do the quality of life of people, uh, that's the way I am looking at contribution society. So uh, I believe you you need to be objective in how you're judging it, but yeah, it, it needn't always be uh, for uh, at cost. You have to profit motivated, that helps uh, because you need also to think about your own sustainability. If the company is not going to be sustainable, it's really not going to be motivated. Absolutely. So you know, I think great points, right? Both of you. Maybe I will just ask Shalini now when she has come from a very diverse kind of a background with corporate uh, you know, experiences. And then I was intrigued when I saw the K4 coach uh, you know, initiative that he is now driving. And I went into her website and tried to understand what it was that she was trying to do. And it's fascinating to see that you know, the objective of this um, initiative is to really um, fulfill the potential of human being, of a human being. Right? It could be in various settings. But you know, how does somebody really perform the potential maybe shalini can you know kind of share with us i mean her vision behind this entire thing and you know how she believes that you know something like this can impact you know society you know in a, in a much larger scale you know shall we would, would you want to explain or elaborate on that thanks Sabu. uh look i mean i mean i i have a different take on how i look at any 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 form whether it's a startup or an enterprise i think of course from a, from a financial performance standpoint, of course, profit is important, and and we do either categorize them as for profit or not for profit. But I firmly believe that every organization has to be existing for a purpose, and the profit and non profit is the, is the logistical element of it. Now, of course, um, I mean, when I uh, when I was working with my previous organization, uh, I was working with the organization because I firmly believe in the purpose and the mission of the organization. Uh, and even today, when uh, when uh, we have this start of K4 uh, Coach, I think of course the, the the goal is to create a software as a service which is going to be consumed by end users, in more so in a professional setup. But if you look at the impact it is going to create, it is going to be impactful at the individual level. And uh, we believe that at the end of the day, what if we are able to measure the kind of impact we aspire to create, it will actually be called a social enterprise than 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 a corporate uh, software provider or a service provider. Um, I mean, the other thing that I also think is is when when you are at a stage when you're looking of building a product or a service, uh, and 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 it, it is an it is either an idea or a concept in your head. 
as long as we have understood the desirability element of it from the end user perspective you've already thought of how you're going to create value and the first step is to create value once you have done that then capturing that value in the context of how you price it how you commercialize it how much money you make would would definitely be the next step fantastic that that, that is that is my view yeah absolutely you know i think uh, one common thread which i think suhas mentioned when he introduced us you know among the four of us is you know it's just perform to potential i see this as a common thread i mean or uh, ramesh you are trying to get a farmer to maximize his earnings his revenues his quality of life you know impact his family his environment there is a whole host of things that you are into so i'm really intrigued to understand you know to to under to, from you what made you choose this particular space i mean how did this happen when I, mean, i don't think you jumped out of bed one morning and said i am going to do the separation of chili stem from sod or whatever right? so this is I mean, how how did this really happen yeah uh it's a long story obviously i did get out of bed one morning and said i want to you know <laughs> separate chilies from the from the stem uh so uh it's it's kind of uh, it's it's kind of related to another hobby of mine uh, which is uh, cycling uh, so i am a avid uh, bicycler so i kind of cycle for practice around bangalore and around bangalore is really beautiful you just go a few kilometers outside of bangalore and you take farmlands and uh, uh, what you typically uh, i mean in the morning you are alone cycling looking at the farms and farmers and what what kind of uh, hits you uh, as you kind of think about it is uh, you know uh the amount of automation or uh, you know farm mechanization is not uh, is not uh, at all uh, large uh, or advanced in india uh, and there are reasons for it i mean uh, so you think about that and you know you start thinking about uh, you know, how how could you contribute to helping uh, automate or mechanize farming in india and then you come across you know the typical problems of uh, of indian agriculture ecosystem right indian farm lands are not large i mean our land holdings of a typical farmer is like you know maybe 5 acres of land around this average is that so uh, the answer is huge amount of farm mechanization is available in developed countries where the farm sizes are huge like you know in acres of land so those mechanizations can't be moved uh, directly into india so so that is where the the seed kind of germinated that you know there is there is a need uh, to help these farmers uh, and my engineering background and uh, you know my uh, design background uh, was what made me think you know i should do, do look at some part and i uh, first focus we said will be at harvest and post harvest side of the agriculture uh, process and uh, so that's how the agriculture technology side came in so can we kind of create automation solutions which will help an indian farmer a uh, typical farm size is being less and uh, and then we did started doing some work around you know what where should we focus our first efforts and luckily you know uh, uh, one like similar meeting with friends uh, one of them happened to come from a, a farming background his you know his family was into chili farming and he told us something about chili farming so what started as like an afternoon tea uh, kind of <clears throat> late into the night and over drinks we finally figured out i at least knew that what i wanted to do so i wanted to separate the stem of a red chili from the chili pot uh, how it helps the uh, helps the whole ecosystem is uh, if you look at the stem uh, and there's another uh, biological term called calyx which holds the pot they both are adherents to the chili pot I mean, in terms of pungency of the chili or color of the chili, and both are very key to uh, uh, to the revenue of a uh, of chili sale. Uh, pungency because in food, you know, you need pungent pungency and flavor. So that is the pungency part. Uh, color, you will be surprised. Uh, the two ladies here that uh, uh, chilies are used to make dyes, which are used in cosmetic industries. So the red color on nail polishes and lipsticks comes from a chili. So. so the, the pungency and the color gets adulterated so if i was to kind of make a solution which could be stem uh you know the stem uh, and the pot pot could be sold at a higher price uh, and if i could reduce or uh, currently it's done manually so if i could reduce the cost of uh, separation uh, then uh, you know uh, it would help the farmer uh, who could now 
you know, destab it or separate it at a lower cost, earn more revenue. So it was a win-win situation. So that's where uh, the idea cropped up. And this is like the first of the projects we are working on, and uh, we hope to go and you know uh, convert more uh, automation solutions uh, to help the farmers. It's, it's really fascinating, right? I mean, I mean, yeah. the, the the opportunity space seems to be so vast, right? And nobody is huge, thinking, huge. You know, I yeah. mean. Yeah. You won't believe it, uh, Subhu. Uh, India produces two million tons of red chili, right? And the average processing cost today, manually, is about twenty-five rupees per kg. Even if I was to let's, uh, I can, I am right now. Uh, I haven't done the cost accounting, but let's assume I can do it at fifteen rupees per kg. I'm going to save ten rupees. Ten rupees per kg converts to two thousand crores yeah. of money, right. which can straight away be pushed back into the ecosystem. Uh, you know where the whole chili farming ecosystem benefits because huge amount of money can be pumped in, so they can work on you know better, better grades, better farming techniques, uh, and you know, better living, all of that. So, fantastic, fantastic. So I think uh, you know one thing which is uh, which I am kind of you know trying to uh, connect the dots here is about working in an organizational setting i think you know all of us you know have been in organizational settings in our past lives and we are running organizations today and we hope to run organizations or enable people to run organizations but i think you know there is this um, you know uh, kind of abrasiveness which comes in when like individuals become part of an organization where really the potential of that person you know is not really you know, maximized in an organizational setting for a variety of reasons right and that is what i think suhas referred to when he talked about one of the things i'm doing is about uh, this uh, ricardo semler's uh, initiative called the you know the semco style institute uh, where he talks about how radically the organizational you know setting can be changed to bring out the best you know in an employee right um you know for those of you who are uh, you know for fellow guests as well as those who are uh, you know on this call i would really uh, recommend that you go out and watch his uh, ted talk one of the most popular ted talks of ricardo sandler on how to run an organization with no rules right and i think you know that is probably what you know you want to do even as an individual i mean you you basically frame rules for yourself you know when you when you move along um you know and try to you know live up to your own expectation like you know in, in, even in a larger setting so uh, you know i know jumar is running a, a young organization i know and i think you know there are you know a handful of people that he is managing so it will be very interesting for me to understand jumar how you know you are able to communicate your vision of building a healthy nation or healthy people in a nation right to your people do they feel as passionate about what you believe in and how do you make the communication happen so i feel uh, when you are uh, i mean i'm like really really early that way in the last uh, few months that uh, you know my company has been open about the product has been open about and uh, i have a really small team right now but i think uh, the most important thing uh, when i was uh, myself building the company and looking to get people in was uh, building the vision and building the story and building uh, you know the logic around it so for me uh, Uh, nutrition is a. Uh, I mean, uh, I I see nutrition as the key to good health, and that was something I had been practicing. Uh, so in my family, we had uh, um, had a cholesterol problem. We fixed that by nutrition. Uh, I personally had gained a lot of weight, and uh, then reduced uh, all by fixing nutrition, really not getting into any fat diet or uh, you know like hitting the gym for three hours a day, nothing like that. So I believe mean, nutrition is the core to good health, and that is a belief that I had carried. And the first and foremost thing when I was building a business was. Digitalize it as a business, but then keep this core intact. So for me, uh, building that vision, creating that need, uh, creating that compelling idea that hey, this just a you know a problem of a single person, but actually a problem that is a uh, which is a countrywide problem, and that uh, uh, this is how we are going to tackle it. Being very clear on those aspects, uh, uh, call it a ten thousand feet clarity, but having that clarity was very crucial. Which is what I did, and that is how uh, when I started communicating. To I think in the initial days, it was not just so. For example, for funding that you're pitching, each employee, each person that you get on board, it, it's a pitch conversation. You are evaluating the person as much as that person is evaluating you. So having uh, my own thoughts uh, sorted, having my own uh, story correct, that helped in uh, communicating better. And I think. Uh, it really helped in also identifying how the how passionate the other person is because the first uh, few hires the first few set of people that you get in the company 
they are really crucial because they set the culture of the company and if they don't believe then i mean really they 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 don't they need to be a part of it so uh, being very careful in selecting who i am uh, bringing on board uh, ensuring that they are as passionate as uh, i am about it was very important and uh, that is how i am looking to grow my team so i have a small team right now like very three four people but this is the philosophy that each one of us carry and i think therefore it will be much uh, stronger team that we build uh, as we grow phenomenal right so i mean uh, you made a great point right i mean the first few people coming into a company you know are, are you know, yeah. so critical for the success you know i uh, my other hat that i am wearing as a venture capital uh, you know guy you know i talk to startups almost every single day and uh, you know mm-hmm. i see that you know even within within what you call as co-founders you know there is a lot mm-hmm. of um, you know mismatch in expectations and you know they just come together because they see an opportunity you know and they believe that you know yeah. there's something that they can do by by coming together but there is nothing mm. that goes beyond that and which is where things kind of start to fall apart right once the organization mm. hits a certain level then all of these differences become you know cracks in the organization right and then you know that kind of you know uh, works to the detriment of the organization right so shalini you know i know you are working in that space in a, a lot about individuals right when you talk about individual performance i i presume you would also logically go into teams performance of teams right so how does the transition happen as an individual you know i i work very well you know but then when i am part of a team do i bring my best possible self into the team how do you make that happen this is a very interesting question and a problem i think many organization is looking to solve because you know, a lot of the time when organization talk about performance while they talk about performance at the collective level what they what they tend to ignore is that collection is coming from a bunch of individuals performing at their optimum levels uh now as part of as part of what we are doing in as part of capo coach as a startup that's exactly what we are targeting what we're saying is that while everyone talks about organizational performance from top below you need to you need to change the whole mindset of how you look at performance you need to start from bottom up you need to start at looking at individuals performing in their role uh in their day to day uh life at their at their job and then looking at how collectively that individual performs with other individuals in the team um and the way we the way we go about extrapolating it is is of course every individual have their own strengths and and weaknesses i mean let's let's call it strengths and uh, areas to work on right now if you look at collectively the team right not everyone is good at exactly the same set of skills or everyone is bad at exactly the same set of um, uh skills the the way to actually make a team work is find a way to complement each other uh 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 how we technically technically would probably look at an ideal relationship or an ideal marriage where you both don't have to be rock stars at the same level as long as you're able to complement each other as long as you are able to delegate your weaknesses as because that is someone else's strength as it means you are able to make it work and that can only come out when the individual truly understand their own strengths and weaknesses a lot of the time when uh, when um, individuals join an organization they join based on a certain roles and responsibility and job descriptions and based on their competency skills and experience they bring to the table what is totally forgotten is what exist uh, often individual outside all is their self motivation which is what is their individual purpose what are their core values uh, what are their drivers uh, and that is what we are trying to bring in into our performance management um, solution thing that as long as you are focusing on individuals and understanding why the individual is performing you will be able to understand why the team performs and you will be able to figure out a way to either reduce or eliminate the 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 poor performance at the team level at the individual level and also at the organization level absolutely absolutely so uh, ramesh do you have uh, do you have people in your organization as well i mean i don't know what what size your organization is and and do you relate to the problems that you know shalini was talking about and uh, jumar was talking about in terms of uh, challenges in attracting the right kind of people as you kind of you know germinate your idea you are on mute please can you please unmute yes uh, subhu uh, 
those are like the typical challenges uh, which uh, uh, I would assume most of the startups face, uh, uh, especially because uh, you know uh, uh, there is no like uh, you know uh, <coughs> no corporate uh, image uh, around it, and it's just you know the passion and the the kind of uh, value which let's say I can uh, translate in my product into to a you know potential employee. So yes, we do have those challenges, especially for me. Uh, you know, I'm talking of advanced design, uh, engineering design folks. Uh, you know, who would prefer to kind of work in established organizations. So you need to sell your your passion to them. And uh, and once, but the best part is that you know once they buy in, uh, and you know when that once you kind of fit the synergies, like you know you kind of complement each other, like Charlie and Jumar was saying. Uh, you know. Uh, you know that, and the equation is all set. That it's like uh, you know, um, you can just uh, kind of do whatever you want to achieve and possibly do. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I at this point uh, I haven't employed directly, but what we do is uh, you know we get uh, uh, people to come uh, work on the business and uh, you know, self uh, self thought to them, and um, and our first and uh, most important. Uh, Criteria for them to come on board with us is that you know they see the passion of what we're doing and they see the value of what we're doing. Once that is sold, I think you uh, get good talent. And um, I don't think they believe also if uh, right. you know they, they buy the passion. Right. So uh, it's tricky, difficult, but doable. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And there's this one thing I would just like to add there is this. Um, I typically tend to do that when when I go and ask, uh, talk to people when I when I'm looking for them to join. I say, I don't want to call ourselves as a company or a startup. I we want to uh, we want to set ourselves as a brand called the growing launch pad, the growth launch pad. And, and people who want to work with us, want to join us, have to see something in it for them. Uh, has to relate it with their own personal and professional growth. And once you are able to strike that. Um, I think I think people are really interested to work with you. Mm. Yeah, interesting perspective. Subo, I have a question for you now. Okay. In spite of you uh, kindly consenting to be the host, you have to ask you another <laughs> issue. So, uh, st starting with some, something that Ramesh was saying, and that rings so so true. So there was a time when, as an Accenture partner, I would go and access a client with ease. Now. Because not too many people know the name of, of the consulting company Trinand that, that I run, it really becomes a different type of a challenge. So you've got to go and meet people and then be able to sort of build that credibility in the hour, hour and a half that you have so that the next set of fruitful conversations could happen. Now, if I were to pull that same thread and ask Yusubu as an investor, how do you see actually see this happen? There are many people who come asking for money. I'm sure there are other uh, so many startups that you meet. Many of them might have had corporate positions or uh, might, might have had, had a background which was stellar. Now, there suddenly are three people, four people and do not have that type of a background or that logo label stuck next to their names. How do you start shifting this? How do you deal with this? How do you figure out what kind of a background would be required? How do they build credibility for you to give money, or rather, essentially investing money? I would say give money. Yeah, I think you know, uh, it's a phenomenal thing, because especially when uh, you don't have much of a track record or you don't have any track record. You know, all that you have is a potential that you are trying to communicate, right? So the 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 non-verbal cues are actually even more important than what you see and hear on a pitch deck. So it is all about the you know how they how convincing uh, they, they come across right when they when they talk about the problem space that they are into right and their particular take on the solution which will actually address that problem right I think that is so very important I mean it it, con it communicates knowledge about the problem space so how much how much depth they have because in many cases you know because it's a it's a wide canvas I mean the, the start of the time talking today. Could be in the healthcare industry tomorrow. I talk to somebody who is completely in a different uh, space, you know, in gaming and media and all of that. And I'm not an expert in any of these things, right? 
so i am trying to understand to the extent that i know from my background and my experience and that is probably very very superficial in some of these spaces so what do i rely on it is it is it is it has got to be the ability of for them to communicate that in a very very com- convincing manner right and uh, the passion that they bring obviously then i also look at you know the, the the theme that they that they that they bring to the table i mean typically you know i think one of uh, you know my panelists here talked about the complementarity among teams you know that is something that you want to look at right if we if we have that kind of a you know a team that adds to the you know the the conviction that we have right when we invest right we know that you know these these uh, startups you know are are you know the probability of them really succeeding in a humongous way are very 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 minimal right so now what we are trying to do is to de risk it to the extent possible when we make an investment decision so i think those are the two or three different things that you look at besides obviously you know the forecast and you know, all of that stuff you know which goes to kind of add to the thing but the key thing is obviously the uh, the, the the knowledge about this problem space the specific solution that they think you know they they are talking about in the way they talk about it and the passion and the motivation that they bring in plus the teams that they bring to the table yeah, that's about it. Uh, if, if i may add you know one point which i we have experienced when we pitched it to uh, prospects and coaches and advisors and and even even investors in the community what we have seen is uh, figuring out i yes, of course I everyone wants to see whether yes your uh, idea is great uh, i mean you should plan your day job to uh, speak to companies understand uh, uh, problems that they are trying to solve understand uh, what they are uh, uh you know uh, looking to do as a team uh, but then that also gives you a good idea of the space the the you know the uh, the overall landscape the market potential etc i think uh, uh, shifting that uh, hat as a vc to as a founder uh, i uh, uh, feel as a founder i can uh, i'm able to uh, speak to vcs or investors that i'm running down to and we do uh, you know it's once for the same it takes it have that conversation because i know the vc is looking for in terms of say uh, uh, traction in the company or what kind of miles what kind of metrics they typically have so um, that helps uh, under becoming uh, and having that understanding uh, so uh, great right i think zoomer was trying to relate to her earlier role as part of a venture capital company and then she has now flipped roles to the other side yes right so i guess she from that perspective so shalini you were talking about what has been your experience right when you go out and talk to you know people who who you want to fund you so what has been your experience so our experience has been of course i mean there there definitely as as a core team of the company you have to demonstrate credibility right you have to demonstrate credibility experience good network so that people can see that yes you're not just talking great about the idea but you also have if not today you have the access to the resources you need to make it happen uh what else helped us in our conversation is when we looked at it from the perspective of actually forming an advisory board for ourselves so we we said we want to put uh, create two advisory board one would be for the business and one would be for the startup so when we said business we said we will have at least two or three people on this business board who would actually coach us be our sounding board challenge our thinking and say are you going the right way about taking the pro, uh, taking uh, looking at sales or looking at operations or looking at even asking for funding or looking at creating the go to market and on the product advisory board we went about looking at okay if if the solution requires a certain kind of domain expertise in our context is neuroscience uh, we need to have a neuroscience you know a professor or 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 a, or a research um you know, you know um, expert on the board um if we need to build competency in a certain manner we need to have those smes and sometimes it's hard to have enough resources and funds to be able to hire these kind of experts uh so i think the way to go about uh, filling that gap is create an advisory board reaching out to senior folks because there are a lot of folks who want to help not in full capacity but even if they are able to give you their couple of hours in a month uh, and be your sounding board that helps immensely right right so i mean ramesh i don't know your experience because i saw you know you have, you come from a huge process kind of a background you have been doing manufacturing and yeah. you know things like that and then suddenly all of a sudden you come into the space where i i i don't think you know you had prior knowledge right you are basically learning on the go so yes. 
how how do you how do you relate to this particular uh, problem that you have right i mean i don't know whether you have gone out to see capital but even to attract people and to communicate your idea with conviction all of that takes a lot of doing it does it does actually uh, subhu i mean uh, let me put it uh, uh, for me like uh, i have multiple folks to uh, <coughs> to kind of reach out to so uh, you know i ran manufacturing op- operations for i don't know how many years and uh, i knew suppliers uh, you know like good friends and uh, now when i go to them uh, and say hey you know what uh, i have to kind of you know uh, you know work in a completely different manner i'm talking from like since and start from supplier i'll come to the customer suppliers who were like so like you know they would do anything uh, when i was working in the corporate world uh, you know they would just do anything if i if i say hey you know i want these parts tomorrow they'll just you know do it like that today uh, and uh, you know when i go and say hey i need the part uh, and i'll say i just need one uh, i mean i'm not talking of mass production right now so and then suddenly you know uh, you'll say okay after a week then week becomes 10 days so yeah challenges are there but you need to work around them uh, so that's let's say supplier and then uh, if i come towards the let's say uh, the customer side uh customer side is like kind of equal right i mean i don't see much difference uh, a corporate selling a similar product to what i sell uh funding to so, yeah, funding is something which uh, we haven't uh, actively seen uh, i mean our funding side is slightly different uh, we want to kind of uh, go from grants to kind of uh, you know uh, non borrowed funding to equity funding so you know uh, kind of slightly playing because uh, uh, i mean indian government does support uh, significantly Uh, so we are uh, we haven't uh, we have spoken to a cup like one vc we have spoken to uh, they have shown interest but uh, you know you also need to have a very good funding strategy like you know what exact you just don't need to rush to a vc on day one or or day 10 or day 20 or day 100 also you need to build your funding strategy uh, so you know look at various options and that goes so i haven't uh i mean shalini has done that she has reached out to vc so she probably is the better person to see how how you get kicked down uh we have it yet the uh, kind of uh, actively uh, seek the uh, equity funding at this point uh, you know we do right. have uh, planned at a later stage so, so today i will may not be the right uh, i'm in a position to say you know uh, how difficult or easy it would be uh, but yeah uh, i do for fact uh, talking to people and now listening to charlie uh, it's going to be a difficult cup of tea mm-hmm. okay. yeah i think that's, that's uh, sorry charlie carry on just one point i want to add you know what's interesting is you know uh, just just at the moment we are definitely bootstrap but the reason we have started going to the vc network earlier because we are looking for getting some funding mid of next year is because mm-hmm. to know on what basis they will reject us so that we can prepare and plan for that when we actually go for funding we are ready for it so i think uh, that is something which also I, i would i would suggest organization start to do is because you don't have to actually go for funding when you really need it sometimes you have to do it to even learn the process sometimes you have to know on what basis for what reasons you may be shut down so that you can put in the right resources or or plan and processes in place to be able to get ready for it six months down the line yeah so uh, yeah we look at funding for from like a 12 to 18 month uh, period and uh, right now again we are also bootstrap but we kind of uh, covered so we will go through sure. that whole challenge of uh, you know kind of sounding boards and things like that to figure out you know, what what we are yeah. missing or what we are not. and you know, so is there we can take so most <laughs> so sure okay. so so but, but but let me let me ask you this because you know funding is just one part of the problem I mean, all of yeah. us you know i mean even myself you know as, as the, on the other side you know where i have the startup Uh, in a sense you know on uh, with the similar thing but um we are trying to create an impact right at the end of the day okay so you know we want to impact as many people as we can we think we can and in the process obviously you know there is a financial angle to the whole thing but ultimately it's about impact so when you hit this hurdle you know whether it is in trying to get the right kind of people whether it is in trying to raise funding you know whether it is trying to talk to a potential customer who rejects you and all of that there is a whole lot of things riding on how strong your conviction is right with the impact that you want to create okay so i am sure you know and i personally can tell that we have gone through those phases where you are not so sure yourself you know is this the is this the good thing that i am facing is this the rainbow is it is this rainbow worth chasing 
what is the price i am paying for that right so have you faced such uh, faces and you know in you in your own uh, you know uh, on the, you know business of the get bank to you know grow and how have you dealt with it one to yourself and secondly when you go out and talk to your teams oh every yeah. day every day <laughs> i every day there is one person who would tell you this is not going to work yeah uh and and you are going you are bound to be disappointed by what you hear you are going to have self doubt uh you are going to have weeks full of self loathing but you just need to develop thick skin for it i mean uh, at the end of the day the first thing the whole team has to do is have belief in what they are doing and ha- need to have the patience to be in it and be with it for at least 12 to 18 months even 24 months to see what exactly they are seeing as a challenge uh, in the execution process versus here and say uh, mm-hmm. so I mean, initially it was tough for me because i this is my first startup journey and i would every time someone would say okay this is not going to work or we don't think this is going to work i would really believe that it is not going to work mm-hmm. because sometimes these are the kind of people who who is in your close network so i stopped talking to my friends and i stopped talking to my intimate network about it because i feel like they are always a lot more opinionated you talk you should go and talk about your ideas to random experts in your network and and when they really give you some sort of feedback you got to then qualify it and then either be personal about it or 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 to, to, to let it go right so ramesh what's what's your take yeah i agree with charlie i mean there are days when uh... you know you get up at that now uh, uh, i mean you get up from very bad as if i would say where you know uh, all the problems are like you know say you know i want this happening that happening uh, this thing is not working uh, especially for me like a huge engineering product right a uh, very advanced technology so uh, something start working or will it work so those uh, days are there uh, i mean i would say that and those days can be really bad so you have to uh, so two things help me i mean in my case uh, uh, me and shruti my uh, my wife both of us are, are like kind of passionately started this uh, she is rock solid but you need to support each other especially like if you have uh, your employee or your partner you know you need to be very clear that you know we are going to give this our best and we will make it succeed so yeah there are days which happen I mean, I I would I would say that uh, you know a lot of businesses uh, you'll hear a lot of startups who pivoted to a different product. I I kind of accept that uh, you know those thoughts come, but uh, you need to be really strong about your passion. When you started that whole thing, you need to be absolutely you know clear that there will be these bad days. Uh, you know, there will be days when uh, you know, you struggle to you know pay pay your uh, you know your uh, employee. Uh, so as is gone through that i know so uh, you know uh, things like that i mean uh, but uh, end of the day what will continue to drive you is uh, is is your passion and uh, there are a lot of times subu uh, you won't believe it that the encouragement comes from places you absolutely do not accept it to like uh, i remember uh, one of these times i was talking to a very small chili farm we he probably makes I am so clear here is his production. He told me uh, that, uh, and this is like I was in the field talking to these far- big farmers. Uh, some of them had shut me off, saying it doesn't work. You don't show me the product. If you show me a PowerPoint, uh, especially in uh, you know agri tech, uh, you can't uh, you can't show a PowerPoint. I mean, they don't understand. You need to show them the product. So, and then this one from small farmer, uh, you know, as I'm walking out, and he comes up and says, you know what, uh, it's a very good idea. Mm. Uh, like, you know, uh, and he said you work on it, and uh, you know uh, that's about it. I mean, I was like, yeah. I mean, sweet so come. So uh, if you are going, uh, things will fall in place. Is what I believe in. So you just keep going, and uh, hopefully you will reach there sooner than. I mean, you made a great point about having a support system, right? I mean. you can you can only carry so much burden by yourself right you yes you should have support system mm-hmm. that's a key point yeah great point all right allow me to add a little bit and uh, share an experience ramesh alluded a little bit to this because he's heard this from me a few times so <laughs> during my, during my accenture days once in a while when i would get stressed about a large deal 
not coming through or working on it and all of us have seen this i would get stressed and this this fr- friend of mine uh, who used to tell me so so has the day that you start up on your own you will know what stress actually is and i saw that right so on the 27th 28th of a month when there is not enough money in your bank account and you got to pay pay the payroll they know what what stress <laughs> really is yeah right? so uh, but, but i also want to take take this forward and see and and what used to happen and the reason i i uh, shared that anecdote is because you get people into an unknown startup once in a while actually at a lower salary that they would have gotten somewhere else just because the work is nice the idea sounds very exciting now how do you translate this into a b2c context or a b2b buyer context so how how do you take take that there i i used to initially find it a challenge because one of my startups previously and the one that i was referring to was an e-commerce startup e-commerce startup in a niche area uh schools besides regular b2c type of consumers schools were one of our largest uh, consumers and customers so going there as a startup trying to sell your concept your idea was a completely different ball game oh yes yeah so may maybe uh, super you you could take that from both an invest investor and a startup or point of view and also maybe share your experiences from your previous startup your it services startup and, and yeah absolutely yeah so yeah so uh, those were those were you know um, you know experiences right at the, at the end of the day you know you you look back and you know you see that you know where you have accumulated the maximum experiences they sort of all come from challenges right when things have been going extremely well i don't think you are really learning much right it's only in the adversities that you know you really come out better as individual or as teams collectively right and that goes back even to my money, even earlier days in software in projects and so on the most challenging projects were the ones that gave the maximum scope for learning right so so that is that has been the case as well right so i don't think this is going to be any different this journey as a, as a you know entrepreneur as a, so it's only, it's only that the buck stops with you there's nobody else that you can point the finger to right and then say that you know that, that fellow was the reason for this problem you can you can't say that so i think that that is something that you have to grow uh, to to kind of you know to learn that lesson you know and you have the scars to show for it right i mean over a period of years so yes. i guess you know i, I mean i don't know how what the shalini and the and ramesh feel the jumar still seems to have some problems in connection but uh, ramesh and shalini you can probably add to that because you both have had uh, long corporate careers and you know you have made the transition on to the other side so so yeah i mean the uh, uh, shalini let me take that and you can throw it out is uh, you know uh, corporate world you have the sink right there is a huge you know there is a huge uh, system that you are Uh, which acts like a sink uh, if things go do not fall in place uh, there is something where you can go and up here as you said the buck stops with you 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 are the sink so uh, it's not just about your issues it's about you know everyone's issue it, it, like you know uh, uh, your employees your suppliers uh, you need them and uh, your ca uh, your attorney and you know everything uh, like unlike in a corporate where uh, you know uh, as as a lead of a operation i could say you know what i yeah, talk to my cfo or talk to my you know a legal folks or you know, talk to my sales folks uh, or my supply chain folks you are like you are you are your you are the legal you are the supply chain you are you know you have in the initial stages you are everything and uh, it but it is uh, it is interesting so i mean uh, end of the day uh, you started if you start with a passion i mean it, if it is it was an idea you just picked up uh, because you want to do a startup it's a different i, I won't be able to comment on that but if you start with a passion uh, which you believe in and you think that uh, you are going to take it all the way uh, and these uh, roadblocks or i mean these issues so uh, it kind of uh, you know uh, kind of uh, for a very short temporary period of time uh, will uh, will kind of you know uh, bother you but uh, you you kind of overcome that uh, i have seen that uh, i mean now it's about uh, uh, just over about 2 years but it up 2 years over now it has started up and uh, you know yeah uh, i i very sh- every every day i mean uh, i am one step closer to what i wanted to achieve and uh, it makes me happy 
uh, there are days when I go two steps back, but then I kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, fix that again. I'm, I'm back. So yeah, uh, you need to believe. Believe is belief is is probably the most important thing. Uh, if you are uh, wanting to do a start, if you don't believe in yourself, your idea, uh, your value system, your ethics, um, and what you want to achieve, uh, I don't think uh, entrepreneurship is your cup of tea. Uh, if you believe uh, and if you can, like you know, live by those, stay by those, uh, you will succeed. Uh, that's what is kind of kept me going for the last two years. Uh, I hope it will take me for the time. Yes, I think I think uh, for me, you know what? Every day uh, I start my morning playing the role I am actually. <laughs> but by the time, by by every passing hour, I am actually. Sometimes I become uh, a project manager. Sometimes I become a BA. Sometimes I am an accountant uh, checking the books. Sometimes I am doing <laughs> sales. So we are actually wearing multiple hats, not even on various days, but. To work multiple hours in, in, on the same day. I think if I had to really uh, call out uh, my journey with Paper Coach, however long it has been, not been too long, so much, it's been a perfect combination of fun and frustration. Yeah, uh, uh, but frustration has not overridden the fun element because of the amount of money I've had. Uh, I don't think I would have ever learned doing what I was doing before uh, uh, as compared to what I'm doing today. I think people who are really passionate about uh, an idea or a concept and know how to take that out to the market to solve a certain purpose, uh, this is this is a great place for them to be in. I mean, it, 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 there's nothing more rewarding, exciting, and fun than than to do this. And I, I feel like you know you actually build life skills. You know, we, we, we're not, uh, we don't grow up uh, building life skills. We are taught things which make no sense after you really have to use these life skills. I think this really helps you build life skills. <laughs> Even if things don't go well, I think I will only be a better off person at the end of it. That's how I look at it. I agree. I, I, I won't trade my startup journeys, and there have been multiple, for anything else. No, no amount of corporate experience substitutes for that. Though I would not, say that not even not even for the not even for the window seat on your uh, executive. Seat. No, <laughs> no, no. Actually, no. no. I mean, maybe just Actually, maybe no. a window window seat in the mountains and a cycle will help. That's the only option I have. Other than that, nothing else. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. Absolutely. So let, let, uh, uh, just being conscious of time and also. So, uh, Juma, from your perspective, do you think our nation, in India, can lead in creating technology which is more people-focused, which is more people lower down at the common people level focused? Can we do that? What What do you think should happen? And because that's that's the target segment for you as well, right? How, how does one go about that? And may, maybe after that, Shalini could take a quick crack as well because she's a quote-unquote NRI. She likely will see it from a different perspective. The fund which uh, invested primarily in impact uh, um, uh, focused uh, companies with uh, in, in companies where the idea was to impact the bottom of the pyramid. And I think over there, uh, so uh, the industries that we were uh, or the segments that we were investing in were across healthcare, agriculture, education, livelihoods. And uh, I did see that there is a See, uh, if you're making solutions for technological uh, solutions for India, then it has to be India specific. It, it really can't be imported from outside because our realities are different, our uh, distribution is different, the PR uh, geographical spread of people is very really different. Uh, I do see great minds working towards it. So I certainly see that is possible. What it needs is the right push, the right capital, the right encouragement. And I think over there, uh, uh, the ecosystem is slowly getting built. Uh, uh, when we were, uh, I mean, at Acumen, I was between 2014, 16, 17, and we did make investments in the space. But what I'm seeing is that uh, increasingly there are many more funds with that impact focus which have come forward. So they are helping the ecosystem in some ways. Uh, the um, government uh, is maturing. There is the DIPP recognition that startups can get that helps. Uh, so there are several aspects happening. 
a lot more, yes, it needs to be done, but it is certainly possible and already it is happening in uh, many ways. Uh, Ramesh is an uh, entrepreneurial uh, venture is one uh, great example, I think, for that. And I think there are several such examples uh, in the country. Now that you call me uh, uh, NRI Suhas, I think what what really needs to I mean, this is my this is my personal opinion. Uh, I am one of those uh, Indians, you know, who, who grew up in India, loved technology, did engineering in computer science, information technology, started my career as a coder, went on to delivery, went on to sales. Now left the country ten years ago, uh, citizen of a different country now, living here and doing whatnot, right? I think. If you have to really see how India has to use technology to really solve common man's problem in India, we need to look at technology beyond a source of uh, economical uh, benefit as compared to you know, how technology is looked at to solve countries' middle class or lower class issues. I think uh, if I just look at historically how IT came into existence, and uh, ironically, you know, India has the largest talent pool of engineers, but they, we all are too busy creating solutions and softwares for some other country. Uh, so I think what really needs to happen is there has to be a, a, a body, um, either from a, a government body or private body, which needs to focus on using technology to be used to create products and services to be consumed by Indians and not by anyone else. Uh, and, and, and unless that really happens, We'll always look at technology as a means to make money than a means as a means to solve problems for common Indians. That, that's that's true, actually. Uh, I, I'll let Ramesh answer his short little thing. So, for for example, I know he's gotten his uh, startup incubated now through a government agency. <laughs> And nobody would have known that. I don't think he himself knew the, this till, till this time. I'll let him speak about that. Mm -hmm. And because we're coming up close to the hour, I'll, I'll uh, maybe request Subhu after that to take over and sort of bring it, our session to a close. Yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, government uh, has, has a lot of initiatives. I, mean, uh, uh, I didn't know about them. Uh, I worked most of my corporate time. I was uh, uh, most of my manufacturing was about exports, rate from most Indian sales and all that. But now I realize that uh, you know there are so much the government is uh, helping startups, especially the startup ecosystem. Uh, it, either it's uh, in terms of giving them uh, services, like uh, give an example. Uh, we are right now incubating uh, from a, a common institute, uh, which is an agriculture institute, and. Uh, uh, I never thought that uh, the kind of effort they would bring into incubation, like if they have got the experts in the field um, and helped mentor these, you know, startups. So uh, huge amount of uh, work happening from the government. I, I mean, you should look at these government websites. Uh, I would recommend Startup India, uh, and I would recommend you register yourself with Startup India uh, because you will get a lot of benefits, like you know, IP uh, filing benefits. Uh, you get, uh, like if I was to, re I registered for my trade, uh, for a trademark for my product, uh, I got 50% off on the fees. Uh, they give you, uh, you know, uh, pre art services, they give you uh, like uh, other these services. Uh, if you go to their website, you will see that there are a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, learning material available there, uh, uh, templates available for you to, you know, write your uh, co founder agreement or any of those, you know, uh, employee. Uh, employee agreement, things like that. Uh, they have got actually got a lot of uh, uh, companies uh, to work as pro bono, they provide pro bono services through Startup India. So Amazon, Zoho, then you can pick up you know, the, so, uh, you know, uh, Startup India. Then there is, uh, you know, uh, the government gives you uh, funds uh, is like uh, you could do uh, MSME site. Uh, there is a, uh, there is a, uh, actually uh, RBI has mandated banks to Type of provide loans to startups, so you know uh, you do the right uh, presentations. And you probably will get non collateral loans uh, are available. Um, so it's huge, actually. I mean, uh, I, I, I uh, uh, seven eight months back, I I was like, you know, I would not even look at a government site. Uh, not even sure. Today I look at them a uh, bit, uh, you know. Uh, 
huge, huge information is available out right there. In that. And uh, I would also recommend one thing: you should, if you are in your field, uh, if I, uh, and, uh, you should look at your know, big organizations which you work. And to up a uh, lot of these uh, big organizations actually provide support to startups. Like a uh, uh, small example, uh, there's a company called Dassault Systems. I'm sure everyone of you would have heard about it. Right now, uh, Dassault Systems also makes a huge CAD. Uh, add uh, software which we need for our startup and very expensive software. So they have a you can apply there and say we are a startup. Provide your uh, you know uh, what you want to do and uh, they give you free software. I mean I got uh, software worth like seventy five lakhs uh, free for a year. I mean I just can uh, you know simulation, mechanical CAD, electrical CAD, everything. So. Please, uh, other than government sites, please also look at uh, you know uh, companies uh, uh, like Buller, The Salt, uh, Shell. Uh, they do a lot of this work. They, they kind of helps uh, startups. Right. Um, and they do also do this incubation through Startup India. So if you go to Startup India website, you may probably see Shell. Uh, Shell kind of makes declaring a program on very specific area of work. Uh, and say if you are working in this area, we will fund you or things like that. So, uh, please do look at government sites. That's uh, uh, they are uh, uh, difficult to navigate, but the amount of information available is amazing. So, I think you know. On that note, you know, let me try to wrap up. Uh, you know, uh, you know, just make, making a couple of comments. Right. I think under, underpinning this entire thing, I am, I am entirely convinced that you know, innovation holds the key to development of people of nations. Right. And I think. All of us are in that journey of how we can innovate in our own space, right? To make a difference and impact, you know, in the areas that we have chosen to do that, right? And you know, if you do it in the right way, and I, I'm just looking at an organization, you know, which is uh, unique in that sense. You know, you look at Amul as an organization. You know, you, you look at the impact they have created by coming out with a business model which is impactful, but it is not entirely the for-profit kind of a model that it has. And you know, I was amazed to know that they are the largest FMCG company today in the country. So it is possible to come out with business model, to make an impact, to earn revenue, to impact lives, and improve the quality of living of so many people. It, we need not follow the path that other nations have chosen. and we can do it in our own unique way, right? And I believe that you know, Jumar or Ramesh, you know, in India and Shalini painting on a larger canvas, we have the potential to make that kind of a difference. And you know, be wildly successful, and in 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 whatever way you define success, right? In your own in your own way. So I am I am super happy to have been part of this discussion. So thanks for facilitating or you know making this happen and sharing some thoughts. And then I hope that the you know the people who participated are able to take away some points as well. So really appreciate that. And back to you, Suhas. Excellent. Thank you, Subhut. Uh, just wanted to take a second. Thank all of you speakers. It's been lovely. Uh, one or two, two of you I have known in the past, two of you I have not known in the past, but I, I know now. So one of the things that we always keep saying in with Chatinar, as the name sort of says, between speakers, between the participants, between the attendees, is a network which should start developing. And this is the network that you start using gradually as you progress in life, in your startups, in your whatever other corporate type of uh, endeavors. On that note, Thank you very much. It's been lovely hosting you. Hopefully, uh, as as nice nice for you to participate as well. Thank you. Thank so you. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you.